Hello, um, this is the second part of the lecture uh, video that uh, we done in the class. Um, in the class we have focused on solving a couple of tasks. Uh, so the first task was to swap uh, two pointer values which were passed uh, into two integer pointers which were passed to a function swap um, and the function was simply swapping them. The second task was uh, writing a simple mapping function which was mapping a particular character to a sequence of characters which was sort of like a semi hexadecimal uh, converter uh, which was able to convert from A to 10 from B to 11 and so forth. Um, we've used uh, a switch statement to, to do that conversions and then we rewrote it without using if and case statements using a map. Uh, we explored how to write tests for the function and the final uh, task which we were doing in the class was to use the population API uh, which is a very nice um, um, set of endpoints which give us some data from World Health Organization about particular details of countries. And the particular endpoint that we were interested in was the life expectancy. So given a, a male or female sex and the country and the date of birth, we can, for example, calculate um, a life expectancy of the, of the person. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, there are two other ones. Uh, one is calculating the remaining life expectancy of a person, giving the age and the, the current date. Um, and also you can search for some life expectancy given some diabe diabetes information. But we were focusing on this one, which is the simplest out of those. Uh, we only need to pass three parameters. Um, so this endpoint uh, uses a GET uh, request and it calculates the total life expectancy of a person with a given sex, country and date of birth. So we have an example here. Um, the example uses that URL, which calculates the, um, the life expectancy of a UK male born in 1952. Uh, and we have kind of an interactive uh, mechanism here where we can pass those three parameters and try out the request. So let's do that. And we see what um, URL we have used. Uh, we see the JSON response that we're getting here and we're getting response code 200, which is okay. And we also have a confirmation that the response is in a application slash JSON format. So having all this information, we can basically test um, how long a person living in, born the same day, living in Norway would live. So if we say Norway, uh, we have 18.8, we try it out with a Norwegian, we see that it jumps a little bit, uh, roughly speaking, four months or so. Um, right, so um, let's try to do this request now from Go. Uh, we will use, um, I will use uh, a population uh, project that I've just created with two empty files, uh, the main and population go. Uh, in main, what we need is uh, we need to obtain the, the life expectancy um, number, which we will get from the function, um, let's call that function get life expectancy. Yep, sounds good. Um, and then we basically print it to the screen. So we will uh, print um, got life expect expectancy, whatever the number is, and we'll pass le here. So that that will be our um, main function. Um, we don't have the get life expectancy. Uh, function that defined yet. So that's what we will do here. Um, so here we will um, define get uh, life expect 
we'll see. And uh, what sort of parameters do we want and what sort of value do we want to get back? Uh, we will um, return um, a float. So for starters, let's return zero. And let's see if our, yeah, so we need, uh, we need a float here. So let's check it out. Um, so if I say go, go run what we have, it basically prints god live expectancy of zero, uh, which is what this function returns. That's pretty good. One small adjustment, we would like to have um, a new line here. Um, all right, so having a skeleton ready, uh, we can now focus on actually implementing that, that function. Um, one thing that we can also do is we can write a test for the population.go, uh, just verifying that it correctly works. Um, we could use this to basically ask for a Nor Norwegian male born in 52 to see if we're getting this number, because if our program works correctly, we should be getting this number back if we are passing uh, those parameters. Um, but because I don't want to complicate the, uh, the problem for now, uh, we will hard code the, the actual URL and we will not pass any parameters here. Um, because it, it just makes um, kind of development a little bit easier if we just start with the hard coded case. So to do that, let's... Um, Let's call our API root this string so we can reuse it actually all the way to here. All right. So we have API root of the function that we will be calling, uh, and then we will need three parameters. Um, so we will need a parameter which is um, the sex, which in our case will use male. Uh, we need a country, which in our case will be Norway. And we need a date of birth, which in our case is the string, this string here. So we will reuse that. Um, once we, we have this working, what we can do is um, we can change, so we have to write to do, change the hard-coded parameters to function params, func params. So we would like to have the, the sex, country and date of birth passed as parameters here. Um, and then the resulting call, we want to get um, the float back. So um, we need to make a HTTP request, get request. How can we do that? Well, um, we can go to documentation. So let's try um, golang.org slash doc and we have kind of um, packages and documents about various things but let's try to locate it from packages so if I open packages and I search for HTTP HTTP I have a couple of entries and one of them is the net HTTP module. Uh, so let's have a look. And as we see, we import it via the call net slash HTTP and we can make simple uh, get request by a one-liner code 
which uses a get function from the HTTP module. Uh, that's all we need. Um, so let's do that. Um, let's construct um, our function. So we will need some response and we potentially may have an error. Uh, and we do HTTP get request and we need to pass the URL for the get request, which in our case will be an API root concatenated with those parameters, right? Um, I can make this a little bit clearer if I declare a URL separately and I say API root concatenated with um, let's have a look. The next one is the sex. So I will concatenate it with sex, concatenate it with slash. Um, and then the next one is um, country and then date of birth. So country plus slash plus date of birth and that's all we need. They do end with the final slash which we could do also. So then uh, we have our URL here. Um, we need to check if there are any errors. So if error is different than nil, we have to handle it. So let's print um, print um, an error message problem and we will print error and we will return zero. So we will not do anything else. We just print uh, that we have a problem and return zero. If we were to properly pass the error to the caller, we would need to uh, pass a second parameter of type error uh, and we could return that error. Um, and then whoever called us would handle that. But for starters, we can just simplify it to this. And then um, we will get a response. So let's have a look again in the docs. Um, so for example, here they say, okay, handle the error. Uh, and then um, response body contains the content of what we got back. And when we're reading the, the body, we have to close it, you know, at the end of using it. Uh, so we don't leave um, any kind of a hanging um, references. So we can do that here. We will close the body and here we need something to um, parse our JSON because resp body is actually a JSON struct that we need to parse, right? To do that uh, we have to prepare um, a small struct that will encapsulate the data that we're getting. So what do we need? We need um, we need a new type which is our live expectancy record which sort of encapsulates this record. So let's call it um, live expectancy. Yes, let's just use le. Uh, which is our record and it will contain um, those four things. So I will copy that. So I have kind of a clear picture of what I need. So I need something that is a string. So I need a date of birth field which is a string and it will be mapped to the date of birth uh, field uh, to make it 
work with the JSON parser, I have to make it capitalized. And then I need a country, which is also a string. And then I need a total life expectancy. Um, I would like to have a total life expectancy written this way, which will be a float. Um, but I can see that the key in JSON is using underscore and uses this notation. So what I need is I need to declare that my JSON uh, equivalent of this will be uh, a string called total underscore life underscore expectancy. Uh, and that makes it easier um, for me to deal with this field because it's, it has a shorter name, but it maps to the JSON long total underscore life underscore expectancy field as we have here. And then the final one, the final one is um, sex, which is um, a string and it maps to a JSON which has sex as a keyword. Right, um, so having that done, I can make it look pretty, prettier. Uh, let's try if, yeah, I don't have the um, a formatter enabled in my ID. Uh, by the way, I'm using um, I'm using a Visual Studio Code this time. Uh, in the class, I used uh, GoLand uh, from JetBrains. Here I'm using a Visual Studio Code, which also is well suited for developing um, Go pro programs. Um, and it has a, a number of supports to, to help you. So having this structure declared, now I need something to parse uh, my JSON. Um, so again, let's go to the docs. And let's go back and let's search for JSON. And again, I can see that I have encoding JSON package. So let's have a look. And it shows me uh, a struct. No, actually it, it has um, a mechanism for yeah that's not really so it has two methods marshall and unmarshall uh, but what i really want is i would like to decode from the reader because um, my body if we Yes, we would need to go back to the go back to HTTP. Yeah, let's uh, search for HTTP again. HTTP package, and if you check what I'm getting back, um, if I make a get request. Get. What I'm getting back is the response, and the response uh, has a number of fields. Uh, for example, status. Check. I can check if I got OK back, and it has the read closer. IO read closer. Um, so I'm actually getting a stream back. So for me, um, you can check 
that the kind of a neat way of using the JSON um, new decoder uh, is actually to to use the um, new new decoder because I can pass my response body to it and then I can decode it into a, a particular struct. So I need a placeholder, I need my um, something that will hold my LE struct. So let's say uh, live expectancy is of type LE and I need to actually create it. So I will have um, and because the code takes a pointer, I can say I need um, oopsie, I need a point. So LE is a pointer to the struct that I just allocated with the default parameters for those four fields. Uh, I don't initialize it. Uh, I don't say the OB equals anything. I just make it empty. So I have an empty struct which has been allocated for me uh, by the constructor, by constructing the struct. And then I just want a pointer to it. So I say I want a pointer and then I can pass it, pass LE directly here, right? And then once this is done, um, I will have um, LE dot um, total LE back, which will be my um, total life expectancy if everything went okay. So if there was an error, I can check if error is different than nil. Um, again, I can um, I can do this. Okay, uh, let's see what it complains about. Um, yeah, it's a, I need to say it's a constant. I have a constant API root, uh, which I use. Um, and then I have some issues here. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not actually because um, I already declared ER here and I don't have any other new variable. I cannot re-declare it. Um, okay, so let's save that. Um, yeah, so the function name is capital D. Yeah, so it warns me that if I did have, have errors, the body may not actually have anything and then closing it will cause more errors. Uh, so what I should do is I should move it after checking that we actually got uh, the response back. Uh, so I can, I should, cl I should do the defer uh, at that point, right? So now I have um, don't use underscore and go names. All right, of course we should use camel notation. So we will uh, use camel notation for my life expectancy as well. So I will change happy root. And I am now calling this life expectancy. Looks good. Let's save it. Okay, still not happy. Um, it says, well, you know, it knows API is an acronym. So it says, well, you should really call it API with capital P. 
PI. Really picky. Uh, so the linter is uh, really telling me to improve my coding conventions, which I will oblige. Okay, uh, more. Right, so I'm kind of exporting it because I called it with the capital A. Um, I don't really need to export it outside of my module. So how about this? Will you be happy with this? Yes. Uh, my live expectancy struct, I probably want to export. So I will say live expectancy contains a response for live expectancy endpoint. I need the documentation. And because I'm not exporting the constant, it's small letters. Okay, uh, now Go is happy, Go linter is happy. I can try and run it. And what we expect back is exactly the same number, which I can see here, to what was the call that we made with the hard-coded values. Right. Um, so now we demonstrated that our code works, that it fetches the URL uh, endpoint data and parses it, decodes it into the struct, and then we have um, we have access to the particular field um, by the, the dot notation. Remember that le is a pointer. So in fact, what I'm doing here is I'm doing this. I'm dereferencing the pointer, uh, getting the struct, and then calling a dot notation on the struct. But we have the syntactic sugar uh, for Go, so it pretends to be the struct directly. All right, so the next task would be um, to change this, oh, sorry, to change this to parameters. Uh, and inside our main, uh, obtain from the user what sort of um, um, you know um, parameters it wants to calculate it for. So we would need to ask the user, okay, are you male? Yes, no. Or are you female? Um, what country uh, you want the calculations for? Uh, and then ask for a date of birth in this particular format. Uh, which is the year dash month dash day. Um, so I will leave it as an exercise for further, further extensions. Um, if we were now to write a test, uh, because this function is not parameterized, it doesn't make sense to write a test because it's only it only always returns the same thing. So in fact, uh, you could we, we could just return that value uh, because we don't have any parameters. Um, but with the parameters, I could write a test and test it for the, for the particular case that I know what the answer is, uh, at least for now. Um, and then hopefully that means that the functionality works and it can cal uh, obtain a, a correct value for other parameters when I'm changing mail Norway and, and the year. Um, so that's all. Uh, there is one uh, additional note that I wanted to make. Uh, so one is that feel free to use any IDE that you want. Uh, I am quite happy using Vim um, for most small things. Uh, for larger projects, um, you know, having a bit more interactivity and having a little bit more uh, help from an IDE streamlines your work potentially. Um, I still do use um, heavily um, um, command line tools, uh, formatting, vetting. Uh, so if we were to have some checks, um, we can we could do that um, in the command line. So so make use of ID, but make use of command line as well. Um, the other thing is um, from Go 11, from Go 1.11, uh, there is a concept of modules. So in fact, you don't really need to um, 
have everything under your go path uh, source um, hierarchy. You can place your projects in different places which are outside of go path and then you just need to initialize them by calling go mod init. Um, so inside your project uh, if you initialize the um, the module it will create um, a go.mod file for you um, and the go.mod file is um, a declaration of what is your project package um, name so in my case it's marriage underscore local slash population because I, I have it um, in marius underscore local slash population folder. Um, you can change this if you want to have a different module uh, identifier. And then it sort of uh, it browses your code and checks what imports are you making. So I'm, I'm kind of and you know uh, making use of the standard libraries um, and also standard library here. And it works out that because I'm, I'm um, uh, in fact, all of those are not related to my project, but they are related to, uh, to the IDE tools that uh, help um, do the package search and so on. So those are build tools for the IDE. I, I, uh, my module, my code doesn't have any external dependencies. So they, they kind of indicated it by saying indirect that it's only used by the, by the IDE not by the um, project itself. So that, those complaints and those fixes that we are making are because of those uh, additional tools that the package installed and um, yeah, I don't really need uh, dependencies uh, uh, plugin for this yet. So strictly speaking, if you if I were developing it in Vim, I didn't. I would not have those uh, four dependencies at all, and my require field would be empty. But uh, the idea is that um, tracking dependencies now is done through Go modules, and they are sort of specified here. Um, so you can use the old way of uh, specifying the dependencies uh, and having everything in your um, Go path hierarchy or you can use the modules and then as soon as you generate the module file, the, this one, Go compiler and uh, Go toolchain will use the module concept for you. Uh, so if you really need external dependencies, if you need to ask for some library, um, then please use Go modules. And you can read about it on the Golang documentation page. So that's one thing. The second thing is try to avoid external dependencies. Um, a lot of um, standard libraries allow you to do pretty much everything that we're doing in the class. Uh, and they have a certain way of doing things. Sometimes it's a little bit more verbose than potentially some libraries, but you don't depend on them. Um, so then you, you, for maintainability and for expanding your code, it is easier if you don't have additional dependencies, which may change, which may evolve, and so on. Um, so. If you don't have to, don't use external dependencies, use the standard dependencies, um, which are built in into the standard library. All right, um, so that's it. Um, I, I think you got uh, understanding of how to do the simple get requests with Go. Um, you can check um, how to do more complex ones with the examples that they provide as well on the um, on the package for HTTP uh, documentation. For example, if you want to uh, set some header, header uh, values, key value pairs, uh, then instead of calling a get, you can kind of uh, create a HTTP client uh, and create a new request and pass the request to the client. So then you're basically executing a request that you've declaratively generated here. And then you can specify what verb do you want to use. You can use delete, you can use uh, update, um, you can use uh, put uh, and so on. Uh, so for post, of course, they have a shortcut as well. 
uh, but if you want to do something more exotic, then you have to create a client, uh, create a request, and then you execute the request with the HTTP client. And then you get basically the same as with the shortcut, shortcut methods. Um, so you can explore that, you can rewrite the, um, this simple line of code to use the more complex client and pass a certain um, token or certain value to, to your request. In this particular case, we don't need to do that because uh, the word population API doesn't require you to pass anything uh, and it always uh, responds with what you specify here. So, yeah, okay, that's it, thank you.